Can the Windows laptops actually keep up with Mac or not? Oh my words, did the Windows laptops get a whooping? So here are three of the best 13 inch thin and light laptops. Two from Windows and one from obviously Apple. They're the ones leading the race in terms of thin and light. But the results might actually surprise you because which one of these is the best bang for buck? You'll find out. So if you are looking for the best 13 inch thin and light laptop, this is the ultimate 13 inch laptop comparison. Amazon Music Unlimited. I'll give you the best news from the get go. If you sign up for the Amazon Music free trial through the links in the description below, you don't just get one month free trial, not two, not three, but four month free trial of Amazon Music. This is limited time only, so act fast through the links in the description below. So Amazon Music has over 100 million songs and podcasts. So whatever you're looking for, they've got it. Listen anywhere, offline and online, ad free, now you can also use your Alexa devices to voice command Ask Alexa to play any song or podcast you want. We find it especially convenient when cooking in the kitchen. So sign up for the free trial right now through the links below and get four months for free. Limited time only, so act fast. First, the thin and light aspect. How heavy are they? So I've got my scales in here, putting the MacBook on. One, two, two, three. This is the Asus ZenBook S OLED, and when we put that one on the top there, 1052.5. And this is HP Dragonfly G4 OLED, 1155. So as you can see, the MacBook is actually the heaviest in this comparison, and the Asus ZenBook S 13 inch is the lightest in there. Interestingly, what I want to say is HP actually advertises this laptop to be under one kilo. So 156 grams less than what I have measured over here. Perhaps that's some kind of other model, but not all models are as light as less than one kg. And that's the same with Asus ZenBook S over here. Actually, when you hold these laptops in your hand, the ZenBook S actually feels the thinnest. It's so, so thin and light to hold. It's absolutely incredible. Very sturdy as well. The MacBook is a little bit chunkier, but still very, very thin. If you put them on the actual table, the ZenBook is still a little bit higher just because of the feet on the back there. They're a little bit higher than on MacBook, but in terms of holding the laptop, it is thinner than the MacBook. Now, one of the first things we're going to look at is Cinebench R24. So here we can do CPU as well as GPU benchmark. Now, the interesting thing is if you look at the Windows laptops, then the GPU benchmark is actually grayed out because the Intel iGPU or the XE graphics does not support Redshift, but the M2 does. So what we're going to do is we're going to do that one first and let's see how much does the M2 get. You can see here the M1 metal has got 1260 points. So let's see how much better is the M2. As you can see, our Apple M2 is 96% utilized. So all of the GPU is getting utilized right now. Now, in terms of the Windows laptops, the interesting thing is this ZenBook S is sitting the highest in terms of from the ground because it's got a clever mechanism with its hinges as you pull the screen out it pushes the bottom of the laptop up which actually gives you the best typing experience the best typing angle out of all of these three and also lets more air in underneath so it comes out like that so looking at the gpu tests here the macbook air is maximum about 47 degrees and you can see how it's just there in the middle is where it finds itself warm. About 46, 45 degrees, but the rest of the laptop is pretty, pretty cool. The HP here is about 44 and it's not even rendering anything. It's just opening Cinebench and Asus is 40 degrees. Pretty cool. Now, 1520 points. That is a pretty good improvement over the M1, which is very, very nice. But now let's take a look at the multi-core performance of all of these devices. Now, bear in mind, all of the Windows laptops have been put to 
maximum performance mode. Now, the one thing is that Windows laptops do get a little bit more performance when you plug in the charger because it allows even more power to the CPU when you do that. But for MacBook, that doesn't change anything whether you plug it in or not. So just so you know, there's a little bit more extra juice on the table when you plug these laptops in. Now here you can see how the HP laptop is blowing hot air onto the screen and you can see that the screen is getting quite warm there and then in the middle there. The max point is 45 there and then on Asus Zenbook it is about 47. It is quite warm there as well and then the MacBook is 49 it's actually the warmest. Now, another interesting thing is when we're looking at the CPU usage on the Mac, it is all cores pretty much 100% utilized here. We can see one block going around in there. On the Windows laptops, we can actually see two blocks going around. Both the HP and Asus actually have the same CPU, which is the Core i7-1355U. So if we open this, we can see all of the 10 cores in use as well. The E cores aren't as utilized as the P cores, but they're all in use doing something. Now, if we're looking at the internal CPU sensors on the Mac, we can see that the CPU cores are running 90 degrees in there, as you can see. Internally, when we're looking at the Intel uh, machine here, the Asus is running 69 degrees or the core max has been 72. So quite a bit colder actually than the MacBook. So the M2 has finished while the Windows ones are still going. I'm going to start the single core in here straight away because I didn't start them all at the same time. We'll see what the multi-core score will be. So the Cinebench has been completed and the M2 MacBook Air is absolutely whooping these Intel laptops. In fact, I took it a little bit further and actually did a test with the Asus Zenbook S plugged in and got the absolute best score we could get for the CPU single and multi-core score. So as you can see, we did improve slightly the single core score and multi-core score when plugging the laptop in, but still we're nowhere near what the MacBook can do. The single core score is between 16 to 18 percent slower on the Zenbook S and about 20 percent slower on the HP here. In terms of multi-core score, whether you're plugged in or not, it's between 31 to 35 percent slower compared to these Windows laptops. Bear in mind that Windows laptops actually have more cores and much higher clock speeds, but as you can see, that's not all. Now let's take a look at the Geekbench 6 CPU benchmark. Now the CPU test is complete. Let's also do the GPU tests and that being OpenCL. Now I'm also running the Vulkan on the Windows laptops and Metal on Apple M2. So all of the scores have been done here on all of the laptops and again, the M2 is absolutely whooping the Windows laptops, HP and Asus. So looking at the single core performance, the Zenbook S is about 5% slower and Dragonfly about 8% slower. And in terms of multi-core score, the Zenbook is 14% and the Dragonfly about the same 14.2, 14.3% slower. But when it gets to graphics, now that's when they get a much bigger whooping. In OpenCL, the Zenbook S and Dragonfly about 40% slower, but in Metal or Vulcan scores, we can see that the Asus and HP are about 60 to 64% slower. That is a huge win for the Mac. Next of all, we're going to look at a blender. And when we have a chance to choose where we're going to do the rendering, then on Intel devices, we only can choose the CPU. But on the Apple M2, we can actually also choose the GPU. So now the scores are in and oh my goodness, is Apple so much better than these HP and Asus laptops. So on the CPU only, we can see that the Zenbook is between 45 to 50 percent slower and the Dragonfly G4 is between 46 to 50 percent slower as well than the M2 CPU. If we change it to the GPU, then we can see that MacBook takes it to another level and is about 88 percent faster 
on monster scene, 64% faster on the Junkyo scene and 139% faster in the classroom scene when we literally swap from CPU to GPU, which is a huge thing and this is not available on the Windows laptops. Now I've got to mention that both of the Windows laptops have a Gen 4 SSD installed. The Asus ZenBook actually has a 1 terabyte SSD, the HP has a 500 gigabyte SSD and the M2 has a 512 gigabyte SSD. Bear in mind, if you know about the issue between 256 and 512 difference on the M2, then the 512 gigabyte version doesn't have as much performance issues as the 256. Now, when we're looking at the results over here, uh, we can see that the MacBook, if these tests do test exactly the same things, then the MacBook SSDs aren't as fast as the Windows ones here, especially on the uh, Crystal Disk Mark. But this doesn't tell you everything. Let's check the Blackmagic disk speed tests. As you can see, the write speed does seem to be about the same as what we saw on the previous benchmark. Okay, now it's gone lower on 1100. This is faster. This is about 3.8 thousand on the right. 3.8 thousand on the right as well. And we can see about three in here in terms of read. Maximum 1,300, 1,700, over 4,000 in there. So looking at the HP, we get read about 3.4 gigabytes per second. The Asus is 3.8 and the MacBook is about 2.9, about 3 gigabytes per second. In terms of write, the ZenBook is 3.8 gigabytes per second. The HP actually doesn't interestingly write as fast secondly. So it's 3.5 there and about 3 0.1 on the MacBook. So the SSDs are actually much faster on the Windows laptop and a lot cheaper as well. Next, I want to test the browsing. So we're going to do the speedometer 2.0 browser test. Can the Windows laptops actually keep up with Mac or not? We're using Microsoft Edge on the Windows laptops and then Safari on Mac, which should be the most native uh, browser. Oh my words, did the Windows laptops get a whooping. It's 503 for the Safari, 291 for the ZenBook and 276 for the HP, which is absolutely crazy. Next, what I want to test is a video export of one of the videos that we've done on the channel. So this is the RTX 1490 review. And as you will see, there are a lot of things going on on the timeline. OK, finally, I've got the Premiere Pro project open or at least it's open in most of the laptops. So the ZenBook opened it. The HP is really spitting in my face right now. It just lags and I don't know if this is because of the HP Wolf security that's making all this thing, but this is not opening. But the what I noticed is the MacBook timeline is very, very nice and smooth. And to be honest, even the Intel timeline isn't that bad either. It does feel a little bit more laggy compared to the MacBook. So what we're going to be doing is going to export. And for our preset, we're going to be using YouTube 1080p. The interesting thing why I want to do this test is because the Intel iGPU inside these processors on the Windows laptops is very interesting because it's got a dual media engine. So it's got two media engines to use for decoding or encoding, whereas the MacBook only has one media engine and the M2 Max, I think from that on you start to have more encoders, but the simple M2 has just a single encoder there. So right now I can see that the MacBook is estimated between about 26 minutes and then the Windows laptop here about one hour and five. It does use the GPU as well, the, as you can see, Metal and OpenCL to actually render this. By the way, I have plugged the Windows laptop in to give it the best chance to compete against the Apple M2. Now, another thing we need to talk about is the battery life of these laptops, because the Windows laptops have a mobile processor and have advertised over 10 hours battery life. 
which is absolutely incredible. And it is actually true. You do get more than 10 hours battery life with these two laptops. I've used both of these quite a bit and it's quite nice to see when you're doing your emails or just browsing the web and writing scripts or something like that. Just simple everyday tasks of what you would do on a laptop. What, you know, a businessman would do on a laptop like this. And seeing that there is about seven plus hours battery left when you just peeking on the battery percentage that is a really nice to see so i wanted to test the battery life between the m2 macbook air as well as these so here's what i did i found a 24 hour youtube video of the fire as you can see from this b-roll and what i did was i just pressed play unplugged all of these when they were 100 percent to see how long can they play back that video and looking at the results the first laptop to die was the Dragonfly G4 at 9 hours 53 minutes and 40 seconds. That's 1080p YouTube playback with 50% brightness on the screen. The interesting thing is that the Dragonfly G4 has the biggest battery at 68 watt hours capacity compared to the Zenbook S which is 63 and the MacBook Air which has the smallest capacity 52.6 watt hours. But the results are very very interesting. The Zenbook S actually reached the 10 hour mark and played back 10 hours 12 minutes and 18 seconds. But now the M2 MacBook Air was on absolutely another level. It played back the video 15 hours, two minutes and 54 seconds. So the Zenbook S has a 32% lower battery life and the Dragonfly is a 34% lower battery life in terms of usage. I've charged both of the HP and Asus here while I've been doing this, but the MacBook still has 65% of battery and we've been absolutely hammering the GPU, CPU and everything. Bear in mind, I can hear the fans of these two, but the MacBook Air is completely quiet. You can't hear anything. But that's a part of the battery life test. All of these laptops come actually with different power chargers. The MacBook Air comes with a 30 watt charger and both of the Windows ones come with a 60 watt USB-C charger. The MacBook comes with a MagSafe charger, but you can charge the MacBook through USB-C as well if you wanted to, or if you want to upgrade your charger to a little bit of a higher power charger, the MagSafe cable actually is USB-C on the other side. So you could use a different charger that you can buy online. If you want to check some of those out, I'm going to leave them linked in the description below. 65 watt and 100 watt chargers. So I wanted to know how long does it take for all of these laptops to charge from zero to 100%. Bear in mind, when testing the Windows laptops, what I could see is they go very fast to about 70% and then they start slowing down. And from 99 to 100%, it took the longest. So between each percentage from 99 to 100, it took the longest time. The fastest charger 200% was actually the ZenBook S. So the ZenBook S lasts longer and charge faster 200% compared to the HP. It charges to full capacity from zero in two hours, two minutes, 29 seconds. Interestingly, the HP is not far behind. Only about 30 seconds later, the HP is at 100%, two hours, two minutes and 53 seconds. The MacBook though takes a little bit longer, two hours, 34 minutes, 37 seconds so about half an hour extra so if you do want a laptop that charges quite fast to 70 percent then both of these windows laptops actually charge much faster than the macbook air but at the same time the time it would take you to charge to 70 percent i bet the macbook air will last longer on even if the battery percentage is lower it will last longer because it's got so much longer battery life if that makes sense now looking at the specs of these laptops they are much more similar to each other than you might think now the cpu is m2 on the macbook air the zenbook s and the hp dragonfly both have the i7-1355U CPU. In terms of cores, the MacBook Air has eight cores. Four of them are P cores and four of them are E cores. It doesn't have hyper threading, so there's one, you know, thread per core, if that makes sense. But basically, it's only a four core laptop with four efficiency cores, but altogether eight cores. 
Both of the Windows laptops have 10 cores. They have two P cores and eight E cores. The P cores have hyperthreading, so you do have two threads per core. In terms of max turbo frequency, the M2 is rated roughly around 3.6 gigahertz compared to the 5 gigahertz what we can get on these Windows laptops. So as you can see the gigahertz spec doesn't mean a thing because in all of the benchmarks the M2 is faster in single and multi-core score compared to these two here. In terms of GPU the Windows laptops have Intel XE GPU which has 96 execution units. The Apple MacBook Air has an M2 GPU which has 8 GPU cores. So it looks like the Windows one should be much better, but they're not really comparable. In terms of media engines, the M2 has one, whereas the Windows ones have two. In terms of RAM, we have 16 gigabytes of unified memory on the M2, but actually the RAM on both of these Windows laptops is also unified because it does use it for GPU as well as CPU. And we have 16 gigs on all of them. So all of these have 16 gigabytes. In terms of memory bandwidth, they say that the M2 is rated about 100 gigabytes per second, whereas the ZenBook S is running 5200 megahertz and the Dra Dragonfly is 4800 megahertz. So a little bit of slower RAM on the Dragonfly. I think 100 gigabytes per second is roughly around 8,000, 7,000, 8,000 megahertz with DDR5. Just bear that in mind. So in terms of RAM, the M2 has a much faster RAM. All of them have Bluetooth 5.3 and in terms of Wi-Fi, the MacBook has a Wi-Fi 6, whereas the Windows laptops have Wi-Fi 6E, so a little bit of a better spec there. When we're looking at the ports of the laptop, this is where the MacBook starts to fall apart slightly. The HP has a USB type A, type C, and a headphone jack on the right side, as well as Kensington lock, which the other laptops don't have. And then we have a HDMI port and another USB type C on the left side. The USB type C is Thunderbolt 4 in USB 4 compatible on the HP. So it's got good ports and as a businessman or traveling, you know, agent, uh, you've got everything you need. You don't need any extra dongles to plug into presentation screens or something like that. In terms of the Asus ZenBook S, we have a USB type A and a headphone jack on the right side, two Thunderbolt ports on the left side, which are type C, as well as a HDMI port. Now. This is where the MacBook really is lacking. If you need a HDMI, you need a dongle. If you need a USB type A, you need a dongle. You can expand it with the USB type C, but that's about it. Moving onwards to the screen. And the screen of these laptops is quite a bit different compared to the MacBook here. The M2 and the MacBooks have been advertised as the Apple Retina display um, and this is one of the best displays what you can get and it is pretty good. It supports up to 10 bits. It does say like up to 1 billion colors. So I can't find the bit depth spec anywhere. It says up to 10 bit display. So I don't know if this is 8, plus, 8 bit plus FRC or this is true 10 bit display not sure but i believe it can support 10 bit these windows laptops can support 8 bit and 10 bit and you might be saying what do you mean 8 bit and 10 bit the thing is if you haven't got the laptop plugged in the screens will run 8 bit oled panels if you plug them in and enable hdr they will start running at 10 bit and hdr color space but you can't switch the hdr on when just running battery so there's a little bit of another downside with these that on battery they are 8-bit displays and when plugged in it is 10-bit display if that makes sense but i do believe macbook has the weakest display out of these three if you look at the size the macbook has 13.5 inch which is about the same size as the hp but the hp has more vertical space on the screen compared to the MacBook and doesn't have the stupid notch in the middle of the screen. Now, this is, I think, a little bit of a 2021 design. This does not help anything. I think this should be just cut out. They don't need it in there. As you can see, the HP actually has a little bit of a smaller bezels in some ways around the sides and on the bottom compared to the MacBook Air. 
and they can still fit like all sorts of sensors up there. It has a webcam as well as an IR sensor for Windows Hello login with face rec recognition. So I don't think Apple has an excuse to have this notch there just get rid of it. It's not a great design. In terms of resolution, the MacBook Air has a 2560 times 1664 screen, but both of the ZenBook and the HP have a much higher resolution. The HP has a 3.2K panel, and this is a OLED panel, and so is the ZenBook. The ZenBook is 2880 times 1800, and then the G4 here takes it to another level, 3000 by 2000 pixels. In terms of max brightness, the MacBook Air is rated around 500 nits. The ZenBook S, interestingly, is rated at 550 nits, which is a little bit more, even though the HDR spec or inside the PC says that this can reach 617 nits in peak brightness as well as the HP. So the HP on spec says 400 but in peak brightness can be 617. So if I'm looking at these screens side by side then I'm not sure about you but the HP is a much brighter screen compared to the MacBook. So the Windows laptops do actually go brighter than the MacBook Air. The Windows laptops also have an OLED technology, which is much nicer than the IPS technology what we have on the MacBook Air. When you're watching some content back in a dark room, you can see that these OLED panels are just absolutely amazing. So if you like enjoying content on the screen, these OLEDs are much more vibrant and much better. In terms of color accuracy, they're kind of all in the same ball, Park. And then the screen refresh rate is also 60 hertz on all of these. Now some of the usability features while it's still doing the rendering. The keyboard and trackpad because these are the two main things that you interact with the computer and your content. In terms of keyboards I think my least favorite one is the HP one. I don't dislike it here, but it's the most hollow click that you can get out of all of these two. In terms of my favorite keyboard is actually this ZenBook S. It's got the most kind of a softest, spongiest keel travel. And in terms of the MacBook Air, there's just a little bit more thinner and not as spongy kind of a travel as on the ZenBook S. I do like that the F1 or the top row of the buttons on the MacBook Air are large keys, the same size as the rest of the keys. All of the touchpads are very, very large. And as you can see, the ZenBook S has probably one of the largest touchpads or trackpads, what Apple calls them here. In terms of the touchpad experience, the MacBook Air is definitely the nicest because it uses haptic click. So there's no actual click, but kind of a haptic feedback as you're clicking in there with your finger. Both of these Windows laptops actually have the touchpads on a hinge. So only when you go onto the lower side of the things, it starts to click. There's no click on the top, but then roughly around three quarters way down, it starts to click. But the HP has a much nicer click than the ZenBook. The ZenBook has a very clicky click, sharp click. It's very loud and kind of makes it feel like it's broken. And I do enjoy the HP trackpad much more than the ASUS trackpad. Let's talk about security features because Apple does advertise their, you know, security as, you know, very, very secure and all sorts of security features inside, which you can see they've got a touch ID fingerprint sensor on the top there to log in and use some of the passwords and all of these things there, as well as whenever you download or try to open something on the internet, it warns you and all sorts of things, but it's just basic Apple security. There isn't anything extra in it there. The Asus is basically the basic Windows, you know, laptop where you have minimal security and it does come with antivirus software in there but uh, this is only a, a, a trial so you do have to pay for it if you want to continue this which is a bit of a bummer but the HP takes it to another level HP has this HP Wolf security kind of technology in there and this is actually a business laptop uh, if this is important to you it's got a lot more security features than I believe both of these together it tests a lot of different things when you open it before you open PDF, when you run programs, when you run browser settings, it does run everything through the security and make sure that all of your things are secure. It does have a fingerprint 
scanner here as well to log in or if you want to use it in some other applications you can do that as well so it's a much more subtle actually fingerprint reader than the mac the mac has a very obvious like oh here it is you know press the button here it's just another key with a little fingerprint on it and you can either just tap it or click it as well and then that will unlock the zenbook doesn't have a fingerprint scanner but both of the windows laptops have a face scanner or the IR sensor so you can use Windows Hello login by just opening the laptop it will scan your face boom you're logged in which I think is a little step further and a little more convenient than the touch ID login what we have on the MacBook Air. Now you could install third-party security software on all of these but out of the box I believe the HP is the best and MacBook second and ZenBook third. While it's doing the render test, let's take a look at the speaker quality because there's some interesting things going on and the MacBooks have always had one of the best speakers. Everyone knows that like it's, it's just amazing speakers there. But then these Windows laptops actually have paired up with quite a nice brand speakers. The HP has paired up with Bang & Olufsen and then the ZenBook has or Asus has paired up with Harman and Carden, which are both very high-end brands in terms of music design and so on. So we're going to look at the HP first and we're just looking at this music from Epidemic Sound. Could have had it all, but you pushed me right into his arm. You wanted to break, I wanted to stay. I mean, very good as well, but right now I'm more impressed with the HP rather than the MacBook uh, speakers, actually. Now, the ZenBook. Could have had it all, but you pushed me right in Definitely one of the lowest quality straight away, you can hear that. It's missing the depth. Why should I sit alone and be sad while you fumble the best you? Your eyes tell me that you don't want to leave just yet. No, my eyes agree. It's almost gay. Even louder. Your eyes tell me that you don't want to leave just yet. No, my eyes agree. It's almost like when we first met. Oh, I don't care, it's getting too late. I won't. So in terms of the speakers, the ZenBook definitely is a big loser in there um, when you compare them to these two. But interestingly, I think the HP is the winner in this because firstly, they do go quite a bit louder and they have quite a bit clarity, a lot more on the highs there. So depending if you like that, I think the MacBook has a little bit more like a flat EQ, maybe lacking a little bit on the bass. You can hear the bass more on the HP and really the Bang & Olufsen, they've done a really, really good job. I think this HP has the best speakers I've ever heard on a 13 inch laptop. They really go really loud. In fact, I'm turning the volume down because they're too loud. So this is a test of the HP webcam and interestingly this is a 4K webcam even though this is upsampled 4K because it's only a 5 megapixel camera. So let me know how this sounds and looks. This is the MacBook Air M2 camera as well as the microphone. Let me know how this sounds. Looking at the picture there is a lot of uh, things going on. I think sharpening as well as uh, you know there's no contrast there's a bit of a HDR going on in there. Let me know what it looks like, but uh, 
this only records 1080p. This is the webcam of Asus ZenBook S 13 inch OLED. So let me know how it sounds and what does it look like? This seems to be only 1080p camera as well. Okay, the rendering test is completed on both the ZenBook and the MacBook Air. And the in interesting thing is MacBook obviously won by quite a bit. 58 minutes, 20 seconds compared to one hour, 11 minutes and 20 seconds. Now, here's the interesting thing. MacBook has done all that while battery powered, whereas the ZenBook has been plugged in. I've been filming this pretty much all day doing all of the different tests, absolutely hammering this MacBook Air, and I've still got 34% battery. So what is Apple's secret? Well, let's take a look under the hood to really see what's going on. So here's the backplate of the MacBook Air, and what can we see inside here? So basically, all of this bottom part here is the battery. And this is essentially what the computer is over here. And where's the fans? That's right, this MacBook Air is passively cooled. This motherboard cable, this goes for the trackpad and all of that. But uh, essentially, this is it. There's no fans underneath here. To put it back, this is quite interesting. You've got these little clips in here that need to slide underneath these screws and then so basically, what you want to do is go this way, push this down, push it in, there we go. And then we'll click these in on the sides. And then you have the four screws to follow. Now, there's no reason for you to actually open it up because there is absolutely nothing to do, change. Yeah, when your battery goes out, perhaps you can change the battery but really there's no reason for you to open it. Let's take a look underneath the ZenBook and the HP. The HP is quite simple because there are only four screws. And in terms of ventilation, you can see straight away, the MacBook didn't have anything underneath here. This is just a solid panel. There's few holes in there just to make natural air convection going around, but the ZenBook and HP have a bit more. The ZenBook has only tiny two little vents in here. The HP has a bit larger vents all the way around. Once you've done the screws, the back panel comes off very easily on the HP. And here is our HP and ASUS. Very, very similar, but you can see ASUS has actually made the battery a little bit longer and flatter, 63 watt hours compared to a little bit thicker one here, which is 68.4 watt hours. You can see that the ASUS speakers are two only over here, but the HP will have two in here, and I believe there's two on the other side as well. Here's the active cooling system for both of these. We can see the heat pipes, two heat pipes, where the HP has actually gone for one massive heat pipe, as you can see here. Here we can see the M.2 slot, and the HP is using the Western Digital SN810 NVMe. This is 512 gigabytes. This has been glued down quite well in there. I can't quite see, but I believe this is Samsung SSD. But the interesting thing is that there is a bit of a thermal pad in here as well that cools the SSD down that goes underneath on there and then just cools it down. The ASUS has a lot more screws though, 11 screws, and some of them are different size as well. Now, before we're gonna go to the conclusion of this video, I wanna talk about the design of these laptops. Firstly, I have a weakness of minimalistic design. If it's beautiful, minimal, less lines, less shapes, that's the best and I think Apple one here wins and I believe you probably would agree with me I think this is all just one piece of solid whatever material and The rest of them are a little bit of a downgrade now I do think the HP has done an amazing job keeping this laptop so minimal if you look at the design It's also one color even the screws underneath are blue, the same color, very, very minimal. The ASUS is probably my least favorite design. If you're looking at inside as well, suddenly there's another bit of color going on. This is a little bit of a gold, there's gray, there's another different silver underneath. Uh, lots of different colors, lots of different shapes, lots of different little bits. But if you look at the Dragonfly and HP, it's all just one color inside and out. All the keyboards, trackpads, everything matches. 
I think this is an absolutely beautiful, beautiful um, laptop. And if you turn up in a business meeting with this one, everyone's going to have a respect for this because this just looks premium. And so does the uh, MacBook Air, actually. It does look premium. It does look a little bit chink chunky and it is just a nice premium laptop, this one as well. This Zenbook, even though being the most slim, there's lots of things going on. This is the least favorite design for me. I think they could have made it a lot more minimal, a lot more simpler, a lot more straightforward, but it's that. It does have actually more performance and is a little bit slimmer. When you hold it in your hand, this is the slimmest and lightest laptop. So that's pretty cool and actually beats the HP in terms of performance. Now, we want to talk about the price because then comes the conclusion. So the MacBook Air here, I configured this to match the same RAM and SSD capacity what we have here, which is 512 gigabytes of SSD, which you have to pay $200 extra, by the way, which is a huge ripoff from Apple. Secondly, we need 16 gigabytes of RAM, which was another upgrade we did from eight to 16 which you have to pay $200 as well. So these two upgrades from Apple, $400 is an absolutely ridiculous ripoff upgrade. Now the HP does a similar thing where when you want to upgrade your SSD from 256 to 512, you have to pay $130, which is absolutely ridiculous pricing. Now, in essence, you can upgrade the SSDs on these laptops. Most likely at this point, you will be just configure them from the get-go. So the MacBook Air costs $1499 altogether, just under $1500. Now this Zenbook here, which is actually the smallest, lightest, thinnest laptop, costs $1399. And that $1399 model is actually with 32 gigabytes of RAM and one terabyte SSD. I've got the 16 gigabytes of RAM which means that it will have even more performance. You get even more specs than what you can see over here and has even bigger win compared to the HP and perhaps even closer to the MacBook because how the RAM is there. Also, when you buy the Asus ZenBook, you get three months for free on Adobe Creative Cloud membership. So if you're already paying for this, you can claim those three months back and don't have to pay for it, which makes this ZenBook extremely affordable. Now, this HP here, this exact same model with the OLED, 512 gigs of storage and 16 gigs of RAM costs $1,711, which is actually $200 more expensive than the MacBook, which makes me scratch the head think, why on earth would you go with the HP rather than the MacBook? I know there's cheaper versions available, but the OLED is one of the main things why you would want this HP because it just looks so much better than a non-OLED IPS panel. So there's that. In terms of best bang for buck, I think you get the most with the Asus ZenBook. In terms of performance, yeah, you're not going to get the same as the MacBook Air here, but I think at this point, you're probably not going to be looking at the performance anyway. You would just want something light and something good with battery life, very good content consumption, uh, you know, screen, as well as trackpad and keyboard, which this ZenBook is pretty, pretty affordable. So potentially the ZenBook right here is $200 cheaper than the MacBook Air. But now then the conclusion, which one would I get? Which one would I recommend buying? Are they worth buying? And I think each one of these is very, very good. I've used all of them and depending which OS system you like, right? There's Mac OS, there's Windows. There's things I like about Mac OS. It does feel snappy, but sometimes when it's not snappy, it is weird because these laptops sometimes felt more snappy to me. It's hard to explain, but when just working with Windows, opening documents, closing windows, going down, opening browser, okay, where was this file opening there, checking my documents, then these laptops felt a bit more snappier than the MacBook. In terms of content consumption, I think these I'm enjoying so much more. If we're watching a movie with my wife in bed and we ha I have to pick a laptop, I'm picking up one of these OLEDs last night we picked up the HP because the speakers are so much better than anything else I had like the speakers in about 5% and I was still had to turn them down sometimes 10% on some of the lower dialogues watching brush out to 
Uh, it's quite funny actually. If you're wondering if these Windows laptops are truly so much of a loser like you would see on this video, then actually that's not true. If you want a really good battery life from these Windows laptops, you're absolutely gonna get it. The only like problem I have is at this price point, you're already reaching the MacBook Air. So the only reason for not getting the more powerful MacBook Air with better battery life is if you don't like Mac OS, which you'd have these alternatives here. Because you can't expand the storage in here anyway, unless you really want to do some DIY and pop up a four terabyte SSD inside or whatever. But then at that point, you're probably not going to need the storage anyway, and you want to use some external storage. And if you want to know how to save and have the best bang for buck external storage for your Mac or for your Windows PC, then check out my storage guide with external SSDs, how to do that and how to make yourself the best performance and the best options out there. But if you just want the lightest and cheapest 13 inch laptop, then this ZenBook is definitely the one. It's lightest, it's the nicest in terms of battery life as well as content consumption. It's just awesome. You can edit video, basic video 1080p and some 4K on it, no problem. But I wouldn't go very beyond that. If you want to pick up any of these laptops, I'm going to leave the link in the description below. And if you do want to support videos like these one, check out technodistore.com for the merch. And thanks guys for watching. I'll see you in the next one. And I'd love to know from you in the comment section below.